The Mini 3 Pro is an excellent drone with an array of functionalities. In this video, I will concentrate on the photography side with a walk through all the settings and features, including several interesting new ones recently added. I will keep things easy for beginners, but experienced users will find several useful tips and tricks. There are three main locations where we can control the behavior of the Mini 3 for still images. In the settings, in the exposure window, and in the main photo video menu next to the shutter. Let's start with the settings. The menu is context sensitive, in other words, the settings are not the same in video or in photo mode. So make sure we choose photo in the photo video menu, and then tap on the three dots on the top right to access the setting and go to the camera tab. As you can see, the menu now relates to photo. The first choice is the size. If we select for 3, we get the full resolution of the sensor, 4032 by 3024, slightly more than 12 megapixels. If we choose 169, we get a version cropped to a height of 2268 pixels, which fits a traditional 4K landscape video format. I always choose 4x3, as it gives more options for reframing or cropping to different formats. Then we have a switch to toggle the histogram on and off. I keep it always on, as the histogram is the main tool I use for exposing. I make sure that there is some space between the last bar to the right and the right edge, to avoid overexposing. Picking level is a tool for focusing. It outlines in red the elements in focus, but only when using manual focus. It comes with three strength levels. I only use it when focusing manually on a subject close to the camera. All other occasions I leave it off, as I find it distracting. A simple way to focus on most other occasions is to simply tap on the screen to focus on the middle of the image and get everything in focus starting from a distance of about 12 meters. The next option, overexposure warning, is another tool for exposure. It overlays white stripes on the overexposed areas. I never use it, as I find it really distracting. Then we have the possibility to overlay grid lines. I like to add the one in the middle to apply the rule of thirds. When taking photos with drones, we often have the horizon line in the frame. Rather than having it in the middle, it is more interesting to divide this scene into thirds and have the horizon either on the higher or on the lower third. In other occasions, especially for top-down shots, we might want a symmetric framing, in which case the same overlay helps position the subject. Further down, we find this new function style with two sliders, one for sharpness, with five steps from minus two to plus two, and another one for noise reduction, with four steps from minus two to plus one. Let's start with sharpness. This is a photo taken with the value zero for sharpness. When I switch the sharpness value to minus two, the image gets softer. Going from minus two to the maximum value, plus two, the difference is very evident. The choice is a matter of preference, so let us know in the comment your opinion. In any case, this slider is a very welcome addition. I'm less intrigued by the slider noise reduction, as with still image taken with a Mini 3, noise is not really an issue, as we can use slower values for shutter speed compared to video. Also, the very wide aperture of f1.7 gathers plenty of light. Finally, the program I use for editing and organizing photos on one photo row has an excellent noise reduction tool based on artificial intelligence that does an astonishing job. You can watch my video on on one photo row by clicking on the link on the screen, and you will find info about it in the description below. There are a few other settings here that we can disregard, as we will find them somewhere else for easier access. So, let's move to the control tab. In gimbal mode, we have a choice between follow and FPV modes. It is meant for video, and we generally keep it on follow, but if we switch to FPV, the aircraft will lean sideways while turning, like a real plane. This gives us the chance for some unusual creative shots. Further down, we have gimbal calibration. Here, we can automatically calibrate the gimbal if we are prompted by the app, 
But we can also access a manual slider if we have the horizon slightly slanted and we can fine tune it. Let's now move to the exposure settings located in the lower part of the screen to the right. In auto mode the exposure is set by the software. We can only access the EV value to adjust the overall luminosity. I find that the app has a tendency to overexpose, therefore I prefer to set the value at minus 0.7 or minus 1. When the camera moves the exposure values are automatically modified to maintain a constant luminosity, but the individual values for ISO and shutter speed are not shown. This is one of the reasons why I suggest using manual exposure, as we want to be able to control these values. By tapping on the icon to the right we access manual mode, labeled as Pro. Then tapping on the area of the values slightly to the left we access the window for exposure. In photography there are three parameters for exposure, ISO, aperture and shutter speed. But with the Mini 3, like with many other presumed drones, the aperture is fixed. Therefore we only have two values to deal with. We can set the values for ISO and shutter speed independently. The MM value at the bottom cannot be modified. It displays the luminosity resulting from the values chosen above compared to the optimal exposure computed by the software. Again, I prefer to see a value of about minus one stop. In this window we notice a major new feature added by the latest firmware update. There are two new auto buttons for ISO and shutter speed. We can now set one of the two values as auto. Let's say we want a fixed value for ISO, 100, to get the best possible quality. In this case we set ISO to 100 and shutter speed to auto. When the luminosity varies, only the value for shutter speed changes to maintain the correct luminosity, leaving the ISO at 100. Notice that the value MM has now turned to EV for exposure value and can be modified. On other occasions we might want a constant value for shutter speed. Let's say that we want a long exposure to shoot moving subject with some motion blur. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps to spread the video to more viewers. Thank you. So we select the desired value for shutter speed and set the ISO to auto. And this time, as the luminosity increases or decreases, only the ISO value varies. We can also choose to put both value to auto. It is very similar to using auto exposure, but there are some advantages compared to the traditional auto mode. In auto mode we have no indication of the individual values for ISO and shutter speed. While using this method we can see both of them. By tapping on the icon at the lower left we access another window with more options. The white balance can be set to auto, in which case the value will adjust automatically as the luminosity changes. I prefer to keep it on manual and I generally set it to 5600 kelvins, which is the average value for sandy conditions. If needed I adjust it while editing. Further down we can choose the format of the images, between JPEG or RAW plus JPEG. There are several photo modes we can choose from in the main photo video menu. After the single shot we can choose the so-called 48 megapixel mode. The 0.77 inch sensor of the Mini 3 Pro is able to shoot photo at a real resolution of 12 megapixels. It is a bare quote sensor capable of splitting each pixel into four smaller ones, therefore creating a sort of 48 megapixel mode. But the size of the pixels is so small that the result cannot even remotely be compared to true 48 megapixel resolution. I find that in easy light conditions images taken in the 48 megapixel mode have just a touch of extra detail, which is a good thing. It should also give better result in large prints. But in high dynamic range situation or in low light, this mode has a tendency to develop huge amounts of noise. And this is not surprising due to the small size of each pixel. So this mod has some benefits, but it has to be used sparingly. And to say that the Mini 3 Pro has a photo resolution of 48 megapixel is frankly misleading. Further down there is an option for automatic exposure bracketing with a choice of 3 or 5 photos. It is a feature that I use all the time for two reasons. 
It takes five photos in rapid succession with different exposure values. Therefore, I'm sure to have at least one exposed perfectly. Also, it is possible to merge the five images to HDR using programs like Lightroom or on one photo row, obtaining better results compared to a single one in certain light conditions, especially in high dynamic range situations. I have done a specific video about the automatic exposure bracketing with the Mini 3. You can watch it by clicking on the link on the screen. Then we have Burst, with a choice of up to 7 shots, useful when shooting action. Finally, Time Shot, to take several images at a specific interval in seconds. I really like the exposure interface of DJI Fly App, with all the settings available from two tabs of a single window. But there is something very annoying and poorly planned that can be very easily fixed by DJI. The exposure values are stored in memory for each single photo mode. Let's say that I've taken some night shots and now I want to take some photos during the day. So I expose for a single photo. Then I want to take a 48 megapixel one. But the values are still the one for the night shot, so I have to expose again. The same if I want to take bracketed photos. Then I want to take a top-down photo, and I need to modify the exposure. If I want to take a single photo, I need to expose again, and one more time for a 48 megapixel one. Doesn't make any sense. The exposure should be memorized from the last shot taken for all the different modes, as these are the current light conditions. End of the rant. To the left of the shutter there are three buttons. The one at the top is to rotate the camera from landscape to portrait orientation. The ability to shoot video and photos in vertical format is obviously a major selling point of the Mini 3 Pro for users who are active on social media platforms. The button below toggles between normal size and two time zoom. If we drag, we can zoom progressively from 100 to 200%. Further down, there is a button to toggle between auto and manual focus. In manual mode, we focus by dragging the parameter bar up and down. Click on this link to watch my video about the settings for video of the Mini 3 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.